Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Mako prototype aircraft rapidly progresses toward first flight. Proteus completes 1,000th flight. And Pegasus flying car crosses the English Channel. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's June 20th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The first new product since the relocation of experimental aircraft pioneer Lancer International to Texas is the four-place Mako. New aircraft is scheduled to make its first appearance at this summer's EAA Air Venture event, July 24th through 30th. Focused on setting a new price performance benchmark, the new design features dual gold wing cabin doors, a first for a Lance Air model. Newly designed low drag scimitar wing tips incorporate lightweight LED lighting and along with other aerodynamic refinements, including an optional retractable nose wheel, are expected to add some eight to 10 knots to the aircraft's cruise speed. A variety of engine options will be available, ranging from the standard 210 horsepower Continental IO360 to a 350 horsepower turbocharged Lycoming TIO580. Typical non turbo cruise speeds will be in the 215 knot range, with the turbocharged models exceeding 250 knots. As of this writing, pricing is still being finalized, but count on it being substantially lower than TTX SR2022 pricing, likely in the neighborhood of 50% or more. Full-scale production is anticipated in quarter one of 2018, and advanced deposits for production positions are being taken now. The scaled model 281 Proteus recently completed its 1,000th flight. Piloted by test pilot Clint Nichols, with project engineer Sam Henney in the right seat, the aircraft took off at sunrise for this milestone flight. Proteus was designed and built and scaled in the late 90s and completed its first flight on July 26, 1998. Proteus' original mission was to test using an aircraft as a high-altitude communication satellite, the first attempt at delivering a broadband internet connection to the masses 20 years ago. The airplane proved to be very versatile as a high-altitude, long-endurance research platform, which allowing Proteus to accumulate over 4,000 flight hours. Proteus, named after the old man of the sea who was known to take on different shapes to escape captors, was built with a removable center section and has the ability to change its shape based on mission. In its current configuration, Proteus has the ability to carry large payloads. The Proteus program schedule continues to be full of exciting and important missions for programs. After the break, flying car crosses the English Channel. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Progressive Aerodyne's Sea Ray Elite offers turbocharged Rotax Power and Garmin G3X Touch Avionics. Incredibly well equipped, you can fly away in this best in category Amphib for less than $160,000. Visit SeaRay.com for more details. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aerol TV, the new AMA Drone Report, our website, our podcast, just email to news-spy at aerol-news.net. A Pegasus flying car made a crossing of the English Channel last week, making the trip in under an hour. Test pilot Bruno Vazzoli drove his Pegasus out of Paris, flew it across the channel, then drove it to London. The actual flight began at 8.03 a.m. local time and touched down at 8.53 a.m. 
Fazoli departed from an abandoned military runway in Amblatou's Côte de Paul, France, and landed in Dover, England. The Valon Pegasus is the first so-called flying car certified by European authorities for both driving and flying. It has a range of about three hours and needs only about 300 feet to take off and 90 feet to land. It can fly as fast as 43 knots at an altitude of up to 9,800 feet. The Pegasus, which resembles a dune buggy and uses a parafoil to generate lift and for controls in the air, was equipped with sea rescue equipment just in case there was a problem crossing the channel. The Pegasus is the brainchild of journalist-turned-entrepreneur Jerome Dolphy, who told the UK newspaper The Mirror that he was inspired by French writer Jules Verne. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. The Jesse James Outlaw Air Show takes place June 24th through 25th in Excelsior Springs, Missouri. It will feature Team Aeroshell, T-33, Ace Baker, Demon 1 Dracula, Grumman TBM Avenger, Brian Carroll Pitts S-2S, Bob Richards S-1S, and more. Gates open at 10.30 a.m. The air show begins at 12.30 p.m. Also on June 24th through 25th is the Dayton Air Show in Dayton, Ohio. It will feature the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, Geico Sky Typers Air Show Team, Rob Hall and Ultimate Air Shows LLC, Red Air Shows, Fighters and Legends, and much more. Gates open at 9 a.m. The feature show takes place from 11.30 a.m. to 4.15 p.m. And June 29th through July 4th in Battle Creek, Michigan is the Battle Creek Field of Flight Air Show and Balloon Festival. It will feature the F-22 Raptor Demonstration Team, U.S. Air Force Heritage Flight Foundation, Ace Maker Air Shows, Tora Tora Tora, Commemorative Air Force, Dave Dacey Air Shows, and more. Gates open at 5 p.m. on the 29th. Feature shows conclude at 10.30 p.m. each night. After these messages, restored Spitfire flips over and take off accident. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Of so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A restored Spitfire 19 was involved in an accident during a takeoff attempt at L'Aerodrome de Lyon Viette in northeastern France last weekend when it flipped over at near takeoff speed. The accident reportedly sent debris into a group of spectators, causing one injury. The pilot, Cedric Rouet, fortunately suffered only minor injuries, but the Spitfire didn't fare so well. IOSCO Flight Training in California has placed an order for an additional four Technam P2006T multi-engine aircraft. These will supplement the two P2006Ts already in service, bringing their P2006T piston multi-engine aircraft fleet to six. Founded in 2006, IFT currently operates 37 training aircraft from its extensive flight and ground school campuses at Redding Municipal Airport in California. According to a new space tourism industry report, the global space tourism market is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 14.34% during the period 2017 to 2021. The space tourism market is expected to inspire a new generation of engineers. Unlike IT engineers who spend most of the time in front of the computer, space engineers get to work on space engines. 
Following the launch of the first 10 Iridium Next satellites in January 2017, their commissioning has proceeded very smoothly as they passed all in-orbit tests with flying colors. These satellites are now interconnected and are operating in full compatibility with the initial Block 1 constellation. Falcon Aviation, an aviation company in the UAE specializing in business aviation services, charter, and aircraft management, is expanding its MRO activity in the growing turboprop market with a Pilatus PC-12 service center at its Al Batin Executive Airport hangar facility. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's get back to the rest of the news. Lockheed Martin's Advanced Development Programs, also known as the Skunk Works, has posted some new information about the SR-72 aircraft that has been under development in conjunction with DARPA since 2000. The airplane, which will be the successor to the SR-71 Blackbird, will be a strike and reconnaissance aircraft capable of flying in excess of Mach 6. The airplane is being developed in conjunction with Aerojet Rocketdyne under a 2006 agreement. Test of a combined cycle engine incorporating elements of both a rocket engine and scramjet were conducted between 2013 and 2017. Lockheed is close to getting started on developing a flight research vehicle that can either be flown by a pilot on board or remotely. The company says the FRV could be flying early in the 2020s with the SR-72 airborne by 2030. Hypersonic aircraft coupled with hypersonic missiles could penetrate denied airspace and strike at nearly any location across a continent in less than an hour, said Brad Leland, Lockheed Martin Program Manager Hypersonics on the Skunk Works website. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. And do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at earl-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow. 